vlog 187 and hey everybody it's your pal me Jaime the shut-in cartoonist musician vlogcasting of course from the corn tortilla press world headquarters located on that island that sags downstream <laughs> those of you that know know I'm finishing my first cup of coffee this morning it's not quite eight o'clock it's probably 7 45 or so on a Tuesday Oh, it's the uh, the stump town. Thank you, Jorge. Yeah, I've been drinking it every day now for like five days in a row. So I guess I'm going to have to thank you every time, right? So, Jorge, you'll probably start sending me other things like, oh, these chones are really comfortable. Thank you, Jorge, for sending them. <laughs> anyway, um, today, uh, let me take a sip of this. Mm. Today, we'd like to talk about we, me. Excuse me, I have to go out of frame. I don't have a table here. And I would like to talk about a cartoonist whose work is beautiful and terrifying all at the same time. I'm uh, pleased to call him a friend now. We've we've been acquainted for a couple of decades at least, but uh, now we've become you know a little closer. I had a great visit with him the last time I saw him in Ohio at the CXC. Uh, he was out there with Carol Tyler, who I also got to to visit with Carol for a while. That was fun, and I think Roberta Gregory was at that one too, because Roberta was at my table next to me. Um, the irony is, is uh, well, Carol lives now in either Ohio, Southern, either Cincinnati or Kentucky or both. I think they have a farm or something. And uh, but she lived in my hometown for many years. Uh, matter of fact, in my old neighborhood. In fact, just a couple of blocks from my mom's house. Um, so it was. And then of course, um, the person I'm talking about is Jim Woodring. Lives up in Seattle, Washington. And Jim's work is just amazing. This one right here is, of course, all the the notorious. Uh, auto journals and uh because i was going to start going off into how i know these people and where they live but we're going to talk about jim woodring today and uh his artwork and holy crap these comics are i mean look at this cover i mean that's you know his paintings it's 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 a disturbing yet beautifully done now the work of jim is like they said is his auto you know auto journals so yeah there there's text in them i mean he does things like you know, he has sections where he's just writing, whoops, excuse me, where he's writing, but these paintings, these drawings and stuff on the side, and the stories are just whew, amazing. Some are creepy as hell. And his old covers from the old issues, look at this, this is amazing. The old covers of Jim, I have all of the books, I have all the comic books as they came out before they were collected in his cover work. I mean, look at this telephone, and the eyes on the old dial telephone, and this rhinocerosy creature, and I mean, Jim was is, is he's just an incredible, incredible force of, of artwork. And as I said, these were um, these are all uh, yeah, the auto journal. As I said, it's it's stuff. This one right here, I think this is the first time I noticed Jim's work was the Invisible Hinge. I believe it was in Weirdo in the early '80s too, and uh, where I was like, holy shit, who is this guy? Look at this thing right here this this story like the characters the paintings they look like they're right from those children's books you read in school in the 60s or something and then just a terrifying story jim woodring holy crap um now there's i have a couple of these books and like i said i have all the the jim comics that are down there um then of course i got a little i got also his books frank <laughs> his other character this cute little kitty guy Still with that incredible style, just the sky, the lines, the the shadow, everything. Everything's just incredible. Now, Frank, these are wordless comics. And Frank is this bumbling, you know, almost kind of like a moron, I guess. I, I really relate to him. But he's always getting in trouble. He's never making quite the right decisions. He's being tempted by all sorts of, of outside forces and so forth. He's, he's very curious. And there's his little sidekick, Pupshaw who's like a kitty or a dog or something. But it's just, Pup Shaw is the one that kind of rescues him and, and kind of keeps his ass from totally being murdered or his demise. And speaking of Pup Shaw, there's a... Uh, oh, there's Pup Shaw right here, too. Here in the front. Uh, there's a... I don't know if she's still there. There's a DJ at Calyx. And uh, I spoke to her about four years ago. And I listened to her. I heard her all the way up to about a year or so ago. Um did a great show and uh, a great set I remember so I got on the phone with her and she had some time so we were chatting told her about mine when I was doing radio then too which she did listen in she called me at my show like the next week 
But uh, before I hung up, I said, and I love the name Pupshaw. And before I could say anything, she goes, oh, yeah, it's a it's a cartoon character by this guy, Jim Woodring. I go, yeah, yeah, I'm fully aware of, of Frank and Jim. She goes, oh, my God, oh, you know his work. I didn't even bother going into, like, how I know his work. I just, just, just let it go. And we just knew each other now as DJs. I mean, she probably won't remember me, but... I hope she's still doing it. I'll have to look on, on Calix. K-A-L-X. It's Berkeley's radio station. I've been listening to them, oh God, close to 40 years, I guess. Great, great station. I used to I used to go when I lived in San Francisco. I'm going to digress here. Between Calix, KUSF, and KPU, two of the three still exist. KUSF is online somewhere, but it's, it's not a radio wave type thing. But anyway, so, uh, yes, go... Go find Frank. Go, I mean, Jim Woodring. Find Frank. Find Jim. Find all these comics. These are great. Uh, Jim Woodring, spelled W-O-O-D-R-I-N-G, just as it sounds, Woodring. All one word. Jim is, uh, his artwork appears everywhere. Apparently, he's neighbors and good friends with uh, the guitarist Bill Frizzell, who I love. And I, Amy and I would see Bill last year. Amy took me to that. That was, that was a great show. Um, and I asked Jim about that, too. And Jim says, yeah, they're friends. And I think they're neighbors, but yeah, the album Gone Like a Train is some of Jim's work on, well, not some, it's the cover, and I think there's another album. I could be wrong, it might be more, I don't know. Anyway, that's it for me. That's about six and a half minutes of your life you're not getting back. Get, I feel better when coffee's in my hand. Oh yeah, the shirt. Uh, for those that know, no, but I'll tell you. WKRP in Cincinnati, uh, Johnny Fever wore this shirt, or a shirt like it. Uh, every now and then. I remember in high school thinking, ah, oh, it's a cool shirt. And uh, I wouldn't mind getting one. Or maybe I was just out of high school. And uh, yeah, they were online. But I, I've always wondered who drew this. I like this, the artwork too. And there's no name on there. So who knows? Something to look up. All right. Now we're going into seven minutes. All right, everybody. If you have to go out today, I suggest you mask up. Matter of fact, I don't mind you suggesting. I'm telling you to. Keep your hands washed and sanitized. Keep a good distance from everyone and be kind to everyone you know be kind to yourself too it'll work we'll, we'll, we'll get through this we got to hang in there but uh yeah just keep doing this what, what's the big deal and uh in the meantime i'll see you guys next time don't forget to subscribe down below thanks for joining me have a great day see you next time